bitches, bitches, we're here for the next Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Oh, look at this. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Oh! I'm gonna call it Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Ha, 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 ha. But boom! Booyah, bitch, here we go. So I'm on to the next Yu-Gi-Oh! game for the PlayStation 1. Now, this game is known for its infamous difficulty, very ridiculously hard, Nintendo hard, as some people would say. Now, before we hop in, uh, I do want to give a little background on this game. Now, you see the 1996 Kazuki Takahashi? That is actually when the original Yu-Gi-Oh! manga was first released uh, back in 1996. This game didn't come out in 1996. This game actually came out in Japan on December 9th, 1999. Now, this is actually even before the Japanese anime begun. The Japanese anime ran from April 18th, 2000 until September 29th, 2004. So this game came out before the anime, and the manga was somewhere around the getting close to the halfway point because obviously uh the manga ran from september 30th 1996 until march 2004 and this game came out in 99 so that was you know roughly probably around chapter 150 or so of the manga probably a little before the halfway mark which is right around when the battle city arc starts and that would explain a couple of things number one the gameplay in Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories here, as far as the card game, is a little different from the real-world rules of the card game, and kind of before it was established, uh, in, even in the manga, what the actual rules were for the game. In total, the manga went for 343 chapters, and I should note that this game right here in America, in English, didn't come out until March 20th, 2002. So, the fact that the rules are a lot different in this game, we'll get to that once we actually get into a duel. And also, um, just how they do the ancient Egyptian arc, and even uh, something with the Shizu that I'll point out when we get there. This game came out before a lot of the particulars of the, you know, uh, card game were finished. And even, I think, before the guy who made the manga was totally sure on a lot of ideas. But it led to an interesting game here. Now, we can go ahead and name our character whatever we want. But since we're basically controlling the pharaoh, I'm going to go ahead and give him his name, uh, Atayim. I believe that's how that's how I say it, Atayim, right? That, that seems to be roughly how you would probably pronounce that. I'm cool with Atayim. Alright, and then it's like, hey, your code has been recorded. You can't trade with yourself, fucker. And we're like, okay, no problemo. Alright, so a big majority of this game is going to have to do with the ancient Egyptian uh, part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Now... This, of course, is something that it's hinted at several, several times throughout the show, but you don't really see a lot of the, you know, details and stuff until the very, very last arc in the anime. And this character right here, um, he's a character that's exclusively for this game and then the sequel to this game, which is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses. This is not a character who's present in either the manga or the anime. He's just particularly in this game. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories! Oh, shit, son! Bum, bum, bum! Alright, and right off, we are just thrust into the game. And we have our boy, Simon, here. Of course, remember, he was one of the last guys we fought in Eternal Duelist Soul. And, um, Yugi's grandfather is the modern-day reincarnation of this cat right here. This dude is pretty cool. Okay, we are actually, we're just gonna run away. Fuck you, bro. He's like, wait, stop, no! 
He's <laughs> oh damn. Now this of course is taking place in the kind of the timeline before Ateum. He's still the prince because there's still, you know, the pharaoh and his wife, the king and the queen, I guess. So Ateum at this point is still a prince. Now we left the pharaoh's palace, but Simon is actually the first duelist that we can fight. So if we just go straight back in here, we can battle our homeboy right now. Hey, he's oh you returned. Yes, 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 return to the palace. No, no, we don't want to do that. We still got a lot of dudes to fight. And then try your hand against me. Please listen, Simon. You remember what happened when we played each other in Eternal Duelist Soul, right? Uh fuck yeah, we're gonna duel him. And we are going to fuck you up. Okay, Simon. Okay, unless you get Exodia, you're not beating us. Sorry. Okay, so let's take a look. I don't even know what our deck, of course, would be. I'd have to... This is the first time you get to look at it. Because you get random cards pretty much every time. Now... In this, as you guys can see, we have... Ooh, I like this. Fiery... Oh, whoops. Accidentally took it out. That's not good. Nope. Go back. Wait, I think we can... Yeah, yeah. Okay, so god damn it. Now I gotta go put the fiery Ryu back. Where is he at? It's probably... Tri yeah, yeah. Okay, there we go. Triangle. Oh, okay. This guy. This guy. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, you guys will notice... Oh, is this the... Book of Secret Arts, if we have any spellcasters. Okay. Cannot be used by bad-hearted sorcerers. I like the details there. Oh, we also have Umi. Okay. But I don't... Huh. Oh, wait, wait. No, this is good. In favor of Thunder Monsters, because the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon is going to eventually be, you know, big time for us. The rest of our deck is meh. We do have a bunch of flame guys, so this could be useful. All right, let's jump in here. So, as you guys have noticed, a lot of our monsters here are pretty weak. Now, in this game, it's all about fusion. You know, fusioning your monsters is pretty much the name of the game here. Okay, so I think we're going to have a lot of water monsters in our deck, and we have Umi. All right. Um, so, here... Normally, in, like, the regular dual monsters, you know, uh, you would need polymerization, the fusion card, and it would combine monsters. But here, we can just pretty much fuse anyone we want to. Um, this little guardian star, this is similar to the, uh, whatchamacallit in Final Fantasy Tactics, the Zodiac signs. Alright, now, fusioning is pretty much the name of the game here. You want to be able to... Because right now, all of our dudes are so weak. So we need to be able to fuse to create better monsters. Uh, let's put the ninja and the flame viper. Actually, no, no, hold on. I want to do the viper first and the armored ninja. Now, I'm going to have to get a uh, real... Okay, that can play... Fire knight. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to like learn these fusions real quick or else we are going to be... Fucked. Uh, ooh, we get the positive guardian star. So, when your guardian star is, like, you get the yellow, like, you pick the correct one, then you get an extra 500 points of attack. I believe it's also defense as well. Um, and so that, that'll create a little bit of, I don't know, an element of randomness, but it sure will be nice later on when our opponents bust out, like, the black meteor dragon you know i think i might be able to combine this guy right here with our uh fire knight no oh no i wasn't able to oh damn uh but yeah later on like some of the opponents get so ridiculous and they're gonna be busting shit out like you know, Black Skull Dragons, 3,200 attack power, and they will just have the cards straight up. So, you know, we'll pretty much be fucked at that point. Alright, so I gotta get some of these fusions down. 
the Scale Angel, and there's no effects either for our monsters. Like, the Scale Angel, uh, if this is flipped in the normal game, you can draw a card, right? But, you know, not here. Alright, that's a beast. Hmm. Do Rock and Fiend create anything? No. Sometimes certain monsters create stuff. It's... And you don't really start out with a lot of good cards. Like, the beginning of the game is a lot different from how the end of this game will turn out. Whereas in, we're doing lots of fusions right now, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Whereas, way later on, it's like, oh, hey, by the way, you know, you have three blue eyes in your deck and all this craziness. Okay, now what do we got? We have a skeleton, like a zombie. These often you can combine with fire and get some good shit. And that's good to know because we do have a lot of fire monsters. Uh, I bet you we could probably actually summon something with a beast and a warrior. Yeah. Ooh, tiger axe. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. Let's use uh, Megara Slate. Let's take that, whatever his defensive thing is. Yeah, Simon, of course, he's the first duelist. He's not very tough here. You're pretty much able to just school this fuckboy. Just hands down, just obliterate him. Kind of learn your deck, learn what you got going. I'm not going to lie. I am pretty excited that we have Umi, though, because very quickly on, pretty much the strongest fusion we'll be able to consistently create. Ah, here we go is the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Okay, now I know if we have... Wait, do I have a Beast down on the... Okay, well, that's a Beast Warrior. Air Fiend Water. Okay. Uh, the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon is going to be pretty much our strongest bet. The Book of Secret Arts is not going to do jack fucking shit for us for a while. And we'll do something like... This and we can clear our hand. Oh, okay, so that did work with Skell Angel. Well, that's, that's good to know, I guess. Good to know what exactly those cards can work with and what they don't. See, a lot of the rules are way different here. This is why I wanted to explain all that stuff about how this came out, you know, like before the Japanese anime, before a lot of the rules, because there's no, you know, monsters don't have effects. Some of the equip cards work differently than they do in the normal game. You know, just a lot of different things like that. Alright, sit down, fucker. And the card situation works a lot differently. You can you always have five cards in your hand. And, you know, if like I use a bunch, we'll draw to make sure I've still got the five cards. Okay, we got a plant. Interesting. Plants, I think, and zombie. Wait, was that the zombie I put down? Yeah, it was. Okay, this, I think this will make punking right here. What? Oh, no! No, I wanted punking. Punking is really good. And he would be just a joy for us to use. Punking has 1800 attack. Obviously, that's fantastic. All right, well, Simon, uh, yep, kind of sunned him right there. It's okay, Simon. You know, you can't, can't expect to beat the Pharaoh. Now, every time you win a duel, you will get, um, a different kind of duel skill level. There's, uh, power, and then you can get, you know, like, uh, S, A, B, you know, C, like all types of different shit. And there's also tech. Now, the tech ranks are really hard to get because in order to do that, you have to have your opponent basically run out of cards. So it's really, really hard to do that. You know, where that's like they they go to draw, but they have no cards left, so they automatically lose. Um, and each victory you get, you get a one card, and you also get star chips. Now, the star chips, they actually, when you put passwords in for the cards like remember how we got a bunch of cool stuff in eternal dual soul if you put the passwords in the cards here in forbidden memories um each card even after you put the password in there is a star chip cost for um unlocking that card 
And a lot of the best stuff, like, you know, Blue Eyes White Dragon, costs 900,000... 999,999. Like, most of the best cards cost that much. So, we're not going to get, like, you know, Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Black Dragon, anything like that through the password system. Uh, let's head over to the card shop. Now, the card shop, this is kind of like, you know, the, uh, you know, main menu hub. You know, we could save, build our deck, return to the title screen. Real quick, let me go look at our, uh, I want to see what that new card we got is, because I must confess I don't actually know what it is. Because at the beginning, we're going to be dealing with a lot of these, you know, real, oh, this guy, this guy. Yeah, a lot of these, you know, low-level monsters that I'm not familiar with a lot of them. I know a lot more about, obviously, a bunch of the high-level monsters, not really the low-level guys. Um, okay, so let's just leave the shop then. And I will do one more duel, I think, for this epi here. Let's head over to the dual ground and hey it's uh Taya or Anzu from the show now what they do here in this game is even in the ancient Egyptian part they have a character for Anzu Jonochi for us to you know play around with Jono see it's interesting so they call the Jonochi character Jono here now, Jono is pretty close to both Joey and Jonochi, so I'm pretty sure Jono is probably what they called him in the Japanese version of the game, and they figured it was close enough to Joey that they just left it here in the uh, English version as well. So we'll go ahead and duel uh, this girl. Her name is uh, Teyana here in uh, Forbidden Memories. So we'll go ahead and we will duel Teyana here. Huh, you know, there are... This card will be important, La La Leon. This is going to be important to get us our Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Do we have any dragons? I don't think we do. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we are going to be in a bit of trouble soon. I may actually have to do some grinding earlier than I thought. Uh, grinding in this game is a must in order to beat it, because very soon our enemies will just have such powerful shit and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, alright, well we can combine these two fuckers right here, so let's go ahead and do that. And yeah, this gives us the Fire Knight. Uh, we'll give him Uranus, so it's just, come on, bring it up Uranus, Teyana. All right, now let's see what else do we got. Okay, we got this machine. Now, if I have a beast, we could do something with this machine. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna clear a whole bunch of these dudes right here. If I end up with some fusion thing, that's cool, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I just wanted to clear our hand right there. Um, now, Teyana is very weak, so I'm sure, yeah, I figured this is gonna be more than enough to fuck her ass up. Charobin. Yeah, boy. And I'm fucking with Charobin. Okay, what do we got? And, yeah. She also is not going to have anything, you know, really strong to fuck with us. Uh, Serpent. Well, there's a... Be Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Can we do these two? And this gives us Gigatech Wolf. Okay, okay. The Gigatech Wolf, this is going to be one of the stronger things we're going to be able to bust out for a while. So obviously having the Gigatech Wolf. Hey, Gigatech Wolf. Hey, boy. What is up? And Charobin. Boy, are we able to create anything stronger? We have to be able to. There is like a very complex like uh, list of like all what all the fusions do. I'm going to have to take a look at some of this and... You know, really figure out what we can do with our deck here. Do fire and fiend create anything? I feel like fire and serpent probably do. Let's try fire and serpent. 
No, okay. Uh, probably only one more turn, and then this biatch is done. Yeah, I need to quickly figure out what a lot of our powerful fusions are in this deck before we start, like, uh, you know, we're about to fight Seto in a little bit. And, you know, uh, Jonochi's not that bad himself. So I need to quickly, you know, acclimate myself to our deck here. And probably pretty soon, I am going to bust out... Okay, ooh, here's Dark Hole. Now, this is good as, like, a last resort type of move. You know, this will destroy everything on the field. Um, now, even Magic and Trap cards, you can only place one card per turn. So, like, if I put the Book of Secret Arts down, like, I couldn't put another card down as well. Alright, now, I don't think... Fiends are hard to fuse. We got a plant here. What do I have on the field? Gigatech Wolf. I'm just curious, could I combine the Gigatech Wolf with another beast? And that gives me Dice Armadillo. Okay. Interesting. Alright, alright, we're learning. We're learning some shit. We're learning some shit. Oh, Legul! Is that... No, no, no. That That's a monster that uh, Weevil Underwood uses. I was gonna say, is that one of the monsters that Malik uses when they fight him in the Battle City Finals? But it's not. It's not. I got excited for not a goddamn thing. And that is a W for us. We win because that's all we do is win. Zone Eater. Garbage. We did get an A. And of course, the... The chances of getting good cards are, like, so minuscule. That's one reason this game is so hard, because quickly our opponents are going to have really powerful cards. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. They're going to have powerful magic cards. And in order to get good cards ourselves, we have to grind, like, you know, a hundred battles against Jonochi. And, you know, maybe we'll get, like, you know, one Red Eyes, Black Dragon or something. Like, I read that in order to get a Red-Eyes Black Dragon, sometimes you have to do over, like, 200 duels with Jonochi before you can get it. Like, it's just like, holy hell! That is some serious shit, man! Like, you have to grind your ass off just to beat this game. Like, it's funny, like, I, you know, I was checking out a lot about this game online, and, like, I see comments on a lot of YouTube videos where it's, like, people are like, Oh, yeah! I remember this game. This game was so awesome when I was a kid. I never beat it, though, because it was impossible. Like, you'll see a lot of shit like that. So we are really, really going to be hell-bent to finish all this. Now, here's the thing. Um, there's a bunch of other duelists that we can face here that I'm going to go ahead and knock out now. But this is going to be hard because there's three more duelists we're going to fight while we're on this screen. Uh, three villagers. The second villager is going to be incredibly hard, um, but we'll knock out those villagers next time. Later, fuckers, for Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories!